In today's video, I'll guide you through the process of creating responsive components that seamlessly adapt to various screen sizes using the power of variables. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. Here, as you can see, I have two different elements. I have this nav bar and I have this team section. And we are going to make these two sections responsive using variables. So we need to make them adapt to different screen sizes. Let's start with this nav bar and then we will move on to this team section. So I'm going to move it right here for now. All right, what do we need to do? Well, basically, we need to make sure that this nav bar is responsive and it adapts to three different breakpoints the desktop breakpoint, the tablet breakpoint, and the mobile breakpoint. So if I just hit A on my keyboard and on the right side, I add a desktop breakpoint to my canvas right here. And also let's add a tablet breakpoint, maybe iPad mini, this one. And finally, let's add a mobile breakpoint as well. Maybe iPhone 14 or iPhone 14 Pro. Let's go with iPhone 14. So this one, as I said, is great for this desktop breakpoint. If I just go ahead and turn it into a component, I can just select it and hit this button in the toolbar. And now if I duplicate it, I can get an instance of this nav bar and I can just simply drag this instance and just drop it inside my desktop breakpoint and just align it to the center. So far so good, the desktop breakpoint looks good, but what about the tablet and mobile breakpoints? So if I just copy it and paste it here, as you can see it doesn't fit and it's not good. So we need to fix that, we need to decrease the width of this component and also we may need to hide a few elements, okay? And as for the mobile breakpoint, again, we need to get rid of all these menu items and also these two action buttons and instead replace them with a the hamburger menu icon that I placed right here, okay? So let's see how we can do that using variables because it's so simple. So first of all, let's decide what elements should be changed dynamically depending on the breakpoint. Well, the first thing that needs to be changed is the size of this component, the width of this component, okay? Because for the desktop version, the width should be 1440. For the tablet breakpoint, the width should be 744. And for the mobile breakpoint, the width should be 390. So this is gonna be one of the variables that we need to create in a second. So in fact, let's go ahead and create that right now. I'm gonna left click somewhere here. And on the right side, I'm going to click on this little icon and right here, I'm going to hit this create variable button. And from here, we can choose from one of these variable types. I'm going to go with number because basically we need a number variable to control the width of our navbar component, right? So let's name it width. And as for the value, I'm going to set it to 1440. Okay, but what about the other two breakpoints, the tablet and mobile? Well, we can create two more values for those breakpoints as well. To do that, we can create different modes for this particular collection, collection one. So I'm gonna hit this little plus icon. Keep in mind that this feature is only available to paid users. I'm gonna hit this plus icon. And as you can see, we have mode one, mode two, and I need one more mode. So I'm gonna hit it once again. And now I can go ahead and rename them. I'm gonna rename this first one to desktop, the second one to tablet, and the third one to mobile. So the first one looks good, 1440. As for the tablet breakpoint, we need to set the width to 744. I'm gonna set it to 744 here. And for the mobile, I'm going to set it to 390. So let's change it. All right, our first variable looks good. Now it's time to use it. To use that variable, we need to select our component and we need to head over to the width property right here. If I just click here, as you can see, we have this option called apply variable. I'm going to hit that. And here you can see a list of variables. Obviously, we have only one variable. I'm going to connect this property to this particular variable. And now this component has a dynamic width. Let's go ahead and give it a try and see whether it works or not. So now if I select this desktop frame and I head over to the layer section, as you can see, we have this little icon. If I click on it, we need to actually let Figma know which mode of this collection we are going to use for this particular frame, this desktop frame. So 
obviously we need to use the desktop mode right so i'm going to connect it to desktop and nothing changed that's fine because the default width of this component was 1440. now i'm going to head over to the second frame here the tablet one and again i'm going to head over to layer and from here i'm going to connect it to tablet and as you can see now our navbar component has been resized now the width is 744 we just need to align it to the center obviously things are messed up here don't worry about it we will fix that and finally let's select our mobile breakpoint and just change the mode to mobile just like this and here I'm going to align it to the center. All right, now we are sure that our variable is connected properly. Now let's see what else we should change depending on the breakpoint. Well, the other thing we need to change is the padding, the inner padding of this navbar component. For the desktop version, I set the padding to 150, but for the tablet, we are going to use a much smaller value and also for the mobile. So for the tablet, I'm going to use a 32 pixel padding and for the mobile, I'm going to use a 16 pixel padding. So how can we do that? We just need to create another local variable here. I'm just going to hit create variable. It's going to be number again. And this time I'm going to call it padding. You can call it horizontal padding if you want, but in our case, that's fine. For the desktop, it should be 150. For the tablet, it should be 32. And for the mobile, it should be 16. So now let's go ahead and select this nav bar. And here I'm going to connect this property to our variable, to our padding variable, just like that. And now if we check out this tablet version, as you can see, the padding has been changed. Now this nav bar is using a 32 pixel padding. And on the mobile, it's using a 16 pixel padding. That's exactly what we needed. What else do we need to do? Well, usually on the tablet version and also on the mobile version, we need to hide a few elements since we don't have that much space, right? So what I'm going to do is hide all these menu items and also these two action buttons and instead replace them with a hamburger menu icon with this icon that I already prepared. How can we do that? It's so interesting. Let me show you how it's done. To make it work, first we need to make sure that we include this hamburger menu icon in the initial version of this navbar component, okay? So what I'm gonna do is drag it and drop it inside, just like this. Let me see if it's placed properly. It needs to be placed inside this container. The order doesn't matter, I'm gonna place it here. So basically on the desktop version, we need this icon to be hidden. So we need to hide it like this, but for the tablet and mobile versions, we need it to be visible. So we need to unhide it, okay? And also for the desktop version, these menu items and these two buttons should be visible, but they should be hidden on the tablet and mobile versions. Okay, let's see how it's done. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our today's sponsor, Conjointly's Market Test. If you haven't heard of Market Test, it's time to check it out to get real human feedback on your designs from 100 US consumers in under two hours. It lets you perfect your UI designs, graphic designs, and more. Market Test evaluates your designs with various metrics using top two box scores, showing what percent of respondents gave it four or five out of five. For example, this report shows over 70% of users found the old Twitter logo very likable, original, and polished, seriously outperforming the new logo. Launching a market test takes only minutes and can even be launched directly from Figma with their new Figma integration. Check out the links in the description to try out market test today. I'm going to create another variable, but this time we are going to use a Boolean variable, okay? A Boolean variable lets you turn something on or off. It can be true or false, okay? And that's exactly what we need. Here for these elements, we need to have two different states. They are either hidden or visible, right? So I'm going to name this Boolean variable as menu items. You can name it whatever you want, just like this. And for the desktop, we need to have these menu items. So I'm going to turn it on. So it should be true, okay? But for the tablet and mobile breakpoints, they should be set to false, okay? 
because we shouldn't be able to see these menu items. The same thing applies to these two buttons. So I'm going to create another Boolean variable here and I'm going to name it has buttons like that. It should be true for the desktop but it should be false for the tablet and mobile breakpoints. Now I need one more variable for this hamburger menu icon. So I'm going to create another Boolean variable and I'm going to call it has menu icon like this. It should be set to false for the desktop breakpoint, but it should be set to true for the tablet and mobile breakpoints, right? So now let's go ahead and connect these variables to our elements. So here I'm going to select these menu items. Basically, there is a frame here called menu items that includes all these menu items. And if I head over to the layer section, as you can see, there is no option to connect our variable to this particular frame, but actually there is. However, it's hidden. If I just right click on this eye icon right here, as you can see, it shows me all these Boolean variables. So basically we need to connect this one has menu items to this menu items frame, okay? And it's set to true. Now I'm gonna select this one, our menu icon, and I am gonna go to the layer section, right click here, and just connect it to has menu icon. And since the default value of that variable was set to false, it's hidden now for the desktop version. And now I'm gonna select this buttons frame that includes these two buttons. And let's just repeat the same thing. I'm gonna right click here and just connect it to has buttons, just like that. And now if we go ahead and check out our breakpoints, let's see what we have. Here it's intact. That's fine. We can see all the necessary elements, but what about the tablet breakpoint? There it is. As you can see, we no longer see our menu items and these two buttons. And the same thing is true for the mobile version. All right, now let me show you another example. Let's go ahead and make this team section responsive as well, okay? Currently, this team section is not responsive and it doesn't adapt to different screen sizes, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is select this members auto layout frame, okay? And I'm gonna set the auto layout direction to wrap, just like this. Now, if I go ahead and select this team section, as you can see, this members frame is wrapping the content inside and that's exactly what we need. But now let's see how we can make it work for different breakpoints. So here, let's turn it into a component. I'm gonna duplicate it, hit Control D or Command D. And here is the instance, let's put it right here, I'm gonna align it to the center. Cool, I can move it up as well. So basically what we need to do is create a variable for the width of this member's auto layout frame. So for the desktop version, the width should be 1140. For the tablet, we can decrease it so we get two columns instead of one row. And for the mobile version, we can decrease the width even more to get only one column of elements, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna left click somewhere and here I'm just gonna create another variable and it's gonna be number and let's call it container size. All right, cool. I can move it up to keep everything organized. And here for the desktop, the container size is gonna be 1140. For the tablet, we can just decrease this amount to make sure that we get two columns of elements. So here, if I just copy this team section component, and I paste it right here inside tablet, we can just decrease the width like this. But as you can see here, we get only one column. That's not what I want. We need to get at least two columns here. So we need to somehow increase the width of this members frame. Right now it's resizing option is set to fill. Let's change it to fixed width here. I'm gonna select it right here and change it to fixed width. And let's connect this width to our variable, this one, the container size, just like that. And now if you go ahead and add this mode, this tablet mode to our variable, maybe 700, as you can see, we'll get two columns of elements and that's exactly what we need. And the same thing applies to the mobile breakpoint. So let me just copy it, paste it here like that. I can just increase the height, but it should be done dynamically. So let's go ahead and select this team section component and just connect its width to our width variable as well. This one, 
just like this. And now we don't need to manually modify the width of this team section component, okay? So let's align it to the center. Obviously this title is way too big. We need to adjust the font size, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. That's not the point. I'm just gonna head over to local variables and here I'm gonna set a value for the mobile mode, maybe 320 like this. And as you can see, this value has been changed dynamically as well. You can obviously go ahead and increase the height of your mobile frame. If you want to learn more about variables, make sure to check out this video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have an amazing day and see you next time.